Rachel Ash is a graduate of the Creative Photography Program at Humber College and is a multidisciplinary artist self-taught in paper craft. Rachel credits her former position as a photographer at the Textile Museum of Canada and through it an extensive exposure to handcrafted textiles as a major influence on her work with paper to this day. In December 2013, Rachel was the featured monthly speaker at Creative Mornings in Vancouver and she spoke on the topic of making by hand to a 200 person audience. In 2017, she was the CCBC nominee for the Mayor's Arts Award in the category of craft and design. Rachel organizes artist talks, curates art exhibitions, and brings people together at art and craft socials. She has exhibited across Canada, the US and the UK, as well as being published in Uppercase Magazine, Design Genius and Paper Clay. Rachel lives and works in beautiful British Columbia. You're a person who works with paper quite a bit. I know Hello. some other things, <laughs> but um, I was just wondering if you could describe your work to me and, um, and processes and materials a little bit. Sure. So, um, yeah, I mostly do paper cut work. So, um, Using an X-Acto knife, I'm cutting uh, very intricate uh, patterns into paper and creating 2D work and also modular installations made up of sometimes hundreds of cut pieces of paper. Um, and originally when I started doing paper cutting, uh, you know, my, my process was very spontaneous and I worked pretty exclusively with this select kind of um, specific shapes that I found worked well together and were easy to cut very intuitively and so would kind of create these asymmetrical patterns um, just through cutting and no drawing. Mm -hmm. And now the current body of work that I'm doing is very pattern focused and so I am doing a lot of planning and drawing before I actually get around to the cutting part of the work and and the most recent work is actually what's behind me so you can see like very pattern, yeah. very yeah. pattern focused. Yeah, yeah. It really seems like you're very, um, I would say almost obsessed with pattern. And yeah, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm definitely obsessed with pattern. <laughs> obsessed with pattern or intrigued, you know, heavily intrigued by pattern. And it's such meticulous work. Um, how, can you describe what it's like to to actually do these pieces and kind of the concentrate? Like, what do you have? How does your studio need to be in order for you to like focus on these types of pieces? I find that um, I think what attracts me to this particular process is that it's very meditative and that it requires a lot of focus because um, you know uh, I'm working with a very sharp knife and it's so easy to injure yourself and it's so easy to go wrong with cutting. Um, so it definitely requires a lot of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, but with these particular pieces, um, I hadn't really done this with previous work where I've done a lot of like sketching in my sketchbook and planning um, and just working through ideas actually before I ever got to the paper cutting stage where in the past I never ever would do that. Um, so that's been a, a really interesting change to the, the process and I think it really has kind of um, improved the work and matured the work in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually studying lots of different patterns. Um, I have this work in progress installation that I've been working on for five years that kind of where all this pattern obsession in the work has come from. And it's, um, it was exploring Japanese uh, textile patterns and Islamic geometric patterns, which tend to come from architecture. And so I've made so far uh, 36 of these paper cuts and they're all um, in eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. And the paper cut itself is, um, I think it's, five and a half by seven. And so there's 36 of these that fold uh, into sort of box shapes and fit together and become like a quilt or tile work in three dimensions. And wow, so a lot cool. of this- That sounds amazing. Yeah, a lot of this, uh, 
pattern exploration came out of doing these, what started as studies at a, an artist residency. And then um, it, it was just this great way, because at that time I wasn't drawing them. I was actually printing out the patterns and using them as templates to, um, to, to cut them. Because um, at that point I wasn't very confident of my drafting skills and drafting patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, and now I've moved away to actually drawing. Like I, I can't emphasize enough how exciting it is that like I'm doing more drawing. Um, cause it used to be a skill that I had when I was much younger and kind of lost it cause I focused so much on photography. What is it about pattern specifically that you're like, why patterns and, um, you know, this exploration of different cultural patterning, um, but also like, what is it that pattern brings to, to, to artwork and, and to like the kind of conversation of artwork? Um, that you find so intriguing? My interest in pattern comes out of my um, being drawn to, like this exposure to um, textiles at the Textile Museum um, as a photographer and like looking how pattern is used in other cultures. Traditionally, it has a lot of meaning in pattern, you know, like it can denote status. Um, you know, in the case of Islamic patterns, like uh, it's a, there's a, it's a spiritual aspect to it um, that, you know, I don't fully understand. Um, but like the reason they use these geometric patterns is that they, they're part of their religion is to not um, uh, depict like real figurative things. works. No body. Yeah, fi yeah. Figurative works. Absolutely no bodies. Yeah. And so this is the direction that they went in, but yeah. there's, it's a spiritual discipline actually to, to, um, it's spiritual ge geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of rich meaning to it. And then with the Japanese patterns, um, uh, I, you know, there's so much beautiful uh, tradition in Japanese textiles. And then their all of their designs come out of uh, explorations of design based on nature. So, you know, there's this wonderful uh, favorite pattern that I like. Um, called the sagaya, which is these kind of repeating scallops. Um, and I love using that in my work and I love seeing it in the world. The thing that I see in your work is that there's, you know, this celebration of pattern. It's, and you're drawing from many, many different cultures. What I recognize as being super cool about patterning is that there's a universality about it um, uh, in that all cultures have used these shapes um, but then they all have their own flair and, and, and way of um, uh, using the shapes to define who they are. It sort of becomes tribal. It's universal and very tribal at the same time. And that's what I think is really cool. But the other thing I like about patterning too, is that it's kind of a way of exerting control on the world, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's something very uh, satisfying about cutting a pattern because it's, especially when it's very structured, that, you you know, um, like drawing it is one way to explore it, but yeah. cutting it is another way. And it's sort of almost like um, looking at a pattern under a mic microscope when it I'm looking at it that degree yeah. um, and really understanding the the structure of it. Why is creativity so important to you in your life? Like, can you describe how just being a creative person, being an artist is, how has it worked in your life and how is it important to you? Uh, I feel like creativity is essential um, for me um, because like it's the one, like when I'm not doing enough creative work, I feel like something's lacking, you know, like um, it's, it's definitely the thing that when I've gone through difficult times, if I'm satisfied with the creative work that I'm doing, like it kind of carries me through. So mm -hmm. it definitely feels very important. Like one of the most important things in my life to kind of foster my creativity. You know, I get energized by the creative projects that I do, you know, and it's not just paper cutting. Like I, um, I do a lot of 
uh, you know, stitching based work like sashiko stitching um, and embroidery. And I find those kind of, um, you know, the work seems like it's different from the paper cutting work, but it's all um, using these fine motor skills that I've developed through paper cutting. If I'm doing multiple creative projects, like mm. I'm so energized by that and it kind of ripples out into all aspects of my life. So can you tell me about one of the most challenging projects you've done so far? Why was it challenging? And then what did you learn from, from like attempting it and doing it? Uh, oh, the most challenging project I've ever done was um, to create these um, life-size paper instruments as a commission for um, Giant Ant, which is like a, um, actually they're, I guess they're totally focused on animation now, but they were doing more film and animation and they were doing a video for a band called Current Swell. And their concept was for them, the band to be playing these paper instruments. And when they first asked them like, uh, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I still, you know, agreed to talk to them about it. And then, you know, as it got closer to this meeting, which I was supposed to have with them, like my brain was, you know, starting to solve the problems of like how I could actually make these things. And I slowly figured it out. And then mm -hmm. when it came time to actually make them, it was very challenging, you know? Um, it was one of those things where, yeah, I didn't think I could do it, but said yes to it anyway. And in the end I could do it. And it was, um, it was kind of blew me away that I could actually make these things. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. It's kind of, it's like art mixed with prop design mixed with, um, um, like sculpture or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely, you know, the, all that knowledge that I gained by doing that project, uh, you know, I took, a, took that away and can use it in my artwork and other projects and realize like, oh, I have a brain that can make three-dimensional objects, which, you know, sometimes you have to say yes to things to realize, you know, what, you can do it. What, what, skills you can, what skills you can develop. You know, one thing I think with artists is we sometimes need to put ourselves in a, in a, in a sort of category in order to, like, say, we do this. But at the same time, um, you continually need to push yourself out of that same category. It's a push. It's kind of a push, push pull situation. Don't you think? Yeah. And, and I think it's, I think it's um, a challenge once you become kind of established because people see you as doing one thing where like, I didn't know you did that. I'm super interested to see what it looks like, you know? Um, there, and there's so, photos. Yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, no, I think uh, we have to, you know, con you know, that's what creativity is. It's constantly being put into a situation where you don't know how to solve the problem and then you solve it. If budget were no object, like I showed up and I'm like, Rachel, I have, you know, all the money you need. What would you want to do with paper that you might not be able to do right now? That's a good question. And um, <laughs> I know you're asking about what I would do with paper, but what I would actually do is take the unlimited budget and yeah. do a whole bunch of laser cuts and do and work in metal. Like oh. I'm, I, I'm, I've, I've done it a little bit, but I'd love to do a bunch more. Like my, my, I think my process will always be paper based, but I, I like taking the pieces, um, and scaling yeah. them up and yeah. cutting them in different materials. Um, Translate it to sculpture that's outside or. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. That's cool. I love that idea. Yeah. Do some maybe public art pieces and things like that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the thing about paper is like, it's relatively, relatively inexpensive as a material yeah, yeah. as are, you know, like um, the blades that I use. So Usually all I need if I'm working on a large paper cutting project is I just need a lot of time. So in yeah. some ways, like, yeah, just throwing that budget as at time, you know, what is the coolest material that you are using right now or tool that you're using in your studio at the minute? Some, some of the more interesting papers that I've worked with are, um, well, some of them aren't considered paper or they're just non-traditional paper. Um, 
like UPO. Uh, UPO translucent is a, a material that I've made some pieces with. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this one behind me here. That's In white? Of, uh, UPO. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's actually a plastic paper. I believe mm -hmm. it's Japanese. And, mm -hmm. you know, lots of people use it as a painting surface, but the translucent is really, really beautiful for cutting. Mm -hmm. And then the other non-traditional um, material that I've used is Tyvek. And I've yeah. created some, you know, seven foot long uh, paper cut pieces with that. And it's also a material that really cuts beautifully. Like it's, it's traditionally um, used in um, house building. Like it's, uh, I believe it's a vapor barrier that's used in, in, in um, house construction. And it doesn't tear easily, even once, you know, you've cut a lot of the material away. Yeah. And then I guess I should also say like, um, you know, the knife that I work with, like I love this particular knife and mm -hmm. always recommend it to people if they're interested in, you know, cutting collage or doing paper cutting. It's the Olfa art knife and it's a fantastic knife to work with. We like to look at one piece that you want to kind of delve into a little further. Um, which piece would you like to look at today? Uh, so I'll, I think I'll talk about one of my most recent pieces mm -hmm. uh, that I completed. So it's part of this new series of uh, pattern mixing pieces that I've been doing. I've actually been thinking about them for years and sort of struggling with how to mix patterns together successfully in a work and have it um, feel kind of cohesive. The particular piece is, uh, it's a tri triangular shaped piece. So it's cut from red paper uh, and it's, you know, mixing um, a lot of different patterns. I'm usually starting with, you know, maybe one particular pattern in mind out of, you know, um, maybe there's like nine different sections or six different sections or something like that, that I have to make decisions around of, what patterns to put in each one. A lot of the decision making around the, you know, the composition of the piece is quite spontaneous. So, you know, that one's a very structured pattern. And then, um, you know, the others, maybe I'll look at, you know, some of the pattern referencing books that I have. Um, what, what's the name of the piece that we're talking about? Uh, they don't actually individually have names, mm. but uh, just call it pattern mixing series, uh, red triangle. It's a mix of like structured patterns I'm referencing specifically, but also kind of just making patterns up as I'm going along. You've done a lot of installations actually. Um, can you just talk quickly about that? Sure. Um, I feel like I haven't done one in a while, but um, yeah, I, I like doing the installation work because it's a way of kind of taking the paper cut work and um, elevating it, transforming it. Um, and in the installations, I'm very inspired by um, like textile work in process as well. Like this mm -hmm. idea of like, you know, with quilt work or, um, or like doing, you know, granny crochet granny squares where you're, you know, creating lots of individual little pieces that mm -hmm. fit together to make a larger whole. And that's yeah, kind of yeah. the, the driver, the idea between behind a lot of my installation work, because, mm -hmm. you know, some of it's for practical reasons in that, like, for the longest time, my studio was in my home, but even though now I have a external studio, like space is still limited. And so I can create these large installations, um, you know, from small individual pieces that, mm -hmm. you know, fit together. Um, but when you take it apart, it's like this little pile of paper. The most recent one is the Patterns of Influence installation that I'll be doing next year. So what advice do you have um, for younger artists or what would, advice would you like to give your younger self now um, that has really helped you and, and uh, would, would help younger artists as they come up? I think the most important thing I've learned that like I continue to learn is like, um, don't limit yourself. Um, you know, I, you know, I started out as a photographer and, you know, did photography for many years. And for the longest time I identified like, this is what I am, this is what I can do. And 
almost felt like that's all I could do. Like kind of had to stay in this lane of photography. And then, um, you know, how I got to paper cutting was reaching this point with photography where, um, you know, because everything was digital and spending so much time on a computer that um, I just wanted to work with my hands more. And so started exploring mm. collage and started working with uh, altered book um, sculpture. And then that led me to paper cutting and, you know, and paper cutting has led me to working with embroidery and stitching and um, all of these things feed into uh each other and also you know what's so interesting about that too is like photography is like very you know like you think about it completely in a different way than you would paper cutting but it's you know here you are you 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 made that somehow bridge together and um yeah i think it's a you're a good example of the fact that you shouldn't limit yourself don't expect to be good at everything especially not right away <laughs> every single person who's ever tried to make anything has started doing something and looked down at what they're doing and been horrified. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like you so. have to make a lot of terrible work before you yeah. make the good work. And yeah. also you find, you know, the, the work that used to be the good work, like a couple of years later is not the good work anymore too. <laughs> Cause you yeah, hopefully you progress and evolve as an artist. So Rachel, would you assign us uh, art prompt using paper? Yes, I will. So, okay. So I'm hoping that this description will be very clear. Um, this is actually uh, an activity that I do in the paper cutting workshops that I teach to adults. Um, but it's one that I find that people find quite interesting. So it's based on uh, a series of paper cuts that I did as a daily project in 2018 and it was uh, a scribble a day and so so what you do is you know select your piece of paper and I would go for you know a drawing paper um, rather than say like printer paper a printer paper tends to be a bit too light for um, paper cutting mm -hmm. and so um, the tools you'll need are, you know, an X-Acto knife, um, a cutting mat, and paper, and a pencil. What you're going to draw is a scribble. Um, and, you know, this is something that everyone can draw, so you don't have to worry about having awesome drawing skills. So when you're drawing your scribble, um, you are going to make sure that you're not just going to do it really fast uh, and all over the place, but you have to kind of do it mindfully so mm -hmm. that you can, po can pose it for uh, a paper cut. Make sure that the lines overlap a fair amount so that when you cut it out, that'll hold together as a paper cut. So, you know, be like loose and, and a little bit slow as you're drawing it. Um, and in, it's okay to actually draw it a couple times before you decide like that you're happy with it. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. found that when I was thinking mindfully about scribbles, like I did actually do, I know it's weird to say, but did some practice drawings of scribbles just to kind of remind myself like what they look like, different types of lines, like sharp lines, curved lines that you can include in, in how you create a scribble. Mm -hmm. And I would also, because you're going to do this as a paper cut, like don't, don't, Go, don't go too crazy with details, you know, because the more details you put into this drawing, even though it's just a scribble, like that's stuff that you have to cut out. Once you have drawn your scribble, then you're going to cut around uh, the lines that you're um, that you've drawn. You're kind of using those lines as a guideline for your paper cut, and you'll cut kind of the internal parts of your scribble first. And once you've cut all of those, then you cut out the outer edge of the scribble until you have a completely cut out scribble. And if you've done it properly, then um, like it should all hold together. I love that. That's, that's great. And you can turn your scribbles into a piece of art. Is there anything coming up for you in your practice that we should know about? Um, I have a show coming up in October. It's a pop-up art show that will be with the art shop. Mm -hmm. uh, run by Mariana Rivera. So where can we find you online? The best place to find me is on Instagram because I'm usually, you know, posting on there a couple times a week and it's uh, Rachel underscore Ash. 
Um, and then my website is rachelash.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Facebook if you use those kind of things. I don't think most young people do, but I also don't use them very often, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. That sounds great. Well, we'll we'll have to come and come check you out, see if we can get to that show and uh, check out your stuff on online. Yeah, that would be great. 